Gopal took a trip to march up. He drove at 60 km per hour for two hours and then slowed down to 40 km per hour for the next 30 minutes. What was the total distance he travelled to march up? Or was his average speed for the journey? Part A. To do this question, it's useful to draw a, a timeline. Alright, so let's say this is march up. And this is where he started, perhaps in SG. They didn't say where he started, but let's just assume it's SG. Doesn't really matter where exactly. He drove at a 60 km per hour for two hours first. So for two hours, he drove at a 60 km per hour, and this is for two hours. And 40 km per hour for the next 30 minutes. What was the total distance travelled? So the distance in the first part Now this will be equals to a speed multiplied by time which is 60 km per hour multiplied by 2 hours and this will give you 120 kilometers. Distance for the second part. Now, again, this will be speed multiplied by time, and that will be 40 km per hour multiplied by 30 minutes. Now, that 30 minutes, you've got to change it to hours because of this unit here, which is in hours. So, 30 minutes is 30 divided by 60 hours. So, that is half. So 40 times half is just 20 kilometers, which will bring us to a total distance of 120 plus 20, 140 kilometers. Okay, this is the answer for part A. 140 km. Now for part B, they're asking us for the average speed for the entire journey. So average speed is total distance over total time. Over to total time. All right, so this is 140 kilometers and we divide this by the total time, which is two hours plus half an hour, that's two and a half hours. And that will give us an average speed of 56 kilometers per hour, which is the answer for part B. A motorcycle took three hours to complete the last one quarter of a journey at an average speed of 50 km per hour. Its average speed for the whole journey was 50 km per hour. Find the total time taken for the whole journey. So to do this again, number a number line or what is known as a timeline in this case is very, very important. So what we do is we divide this into four parts. Three, okay. For the last quarter, okay, he is moving for a three hours at a speed of 50 kilometers an hour. So we can find the distance for that last part, right? Once we have the time and the speed, we can find the distance based on our DST triangle. So the distance for the last part will just be the speed multiplied by the time. And that will just be 50 kilometers per hour multiplied by 3 hours and that will give us 150 km. Okay, so we know that one quarter of the distance is 150 kilometers. We are now able to find the full distance of this journey. So the full distance or what we should write first is the total distance. It is nothing but 150 times 4 which is 600 kilometers, all right? Now, since we know the average speed for the entire journey, which is 50, 
Remember this, friends. Average speed is just total distance divided by total time. So if you want to find the total time, again, you can use your DST triangle, okay? Total time, cover, cover, cover time. Total time is total distance divided by the average speed. All right? So total time will be equals to total distance divided by average speed. So this will just be 600 kilometers. The average speed is 50. And we'll achieve 12 hours as our answer. 12 hours. Final answer for this question. Question 4. At 8 a.m., Mr. Faisal started driving from town A to town B at a speed of 70 km per hour, while Mr. Bong started driving from town B to town A at 80 km per hour. Town A is 225 km from town B. At what time will they meet? Now, this is traveling in opposite direction. So, again, this kind of a timeline will help a lot. So, we have town A here and we have town B here. And Mr. Faisal is moving this way. Mr. Bong is moving this way. All right. So, Mr. Faisal, for every hour, he's covering 70 km. Mr. Bong, for every hour, he's covering a little bit more 80 km. So, when they meet, let's say, for example, at this particular point here. This is a meeting point. When they meet, their total distance traveled at the point of the meeting point must be equal to the distance between these two towns, which is 2 to 5 kilometers. All right, and the way to approach these questions without question, is to come up with a combined speed. What is a combined speed in one hour? So we know that Mr. Faisal is 70, we know that Mr. Bong is 80. Their combined speed for one hour of travelling is 150 km per hour. And remember this, at the meeting point, they need to travel a total, a combined distance of 2 to 5 km. Alright? So the time that they will meet will be equals to, again, use DST, yeah? DST. Time that they meet will be their combined distance divided by their combined speed. So that will be 2 to 5 divided by 150. And that will give you one and a half hours. Alright, so at what time will they meet? Okay, not the duration that they will meet. At what time? Meaning they started at 8 a.m. So you can draw a simple timeline. What's one and a half hours after that? You can go to one hour first, you will get 9 a.m. And then half an hour after that is 9.30 a.m. As our final answer for this question. So again, one hour and 30 minutes all right 9 30 a.m now for, for those of you not so sure hey how do i convert from hours to minutes okay you can use this very simple graphic from hours to minutes you just have to times by 60 if you go backwards you divide by 60. Rebecca drives from town X to town Y at a speed of 45 km per hour. At the same time, Jenny drives from town Y to town X at 60 km per hour. Both of them start their journey at 11 a.m. Given that the distance between town X and town Y is 210 km, at what time did they meet? Now again, timeline. All right, so we have X and we have Y. And Rebecca is moving this way. On the other opposite direction, Jenny is moving this way. So... Remember, for opposite direction questions, at the point where they are meeting up, at the meeting point, their combined distance must be equal to the distance between the two towns, which in this case is 210 kilometers. Alright, so to find the time taken for them to meet up, we'll have to do combined distance travel. I divide this by the combined speed. Alright, so again, we use the D, 
S T triangle. So the combined distance that they have traveled once they hit this meeting point, once this person hits the meeting point, the combined distance again will be two hundred and ten km, because this person would have traveled this much, and Jenny would have traveled this much. So when you add these two up together, you'll get two hundred and ten. So two hundred and ten kilometers divided by what's the combined speed? It's nothing but forty five uh, plus sixty km per hour. So this is just 210 kilometers and we divide this by 105 km per hour and we'll get an answer of 2 hours but they're asking for at what time. So what we need to do now is to start at 11 a.m. and we add 2 hours. Alright, so you can add 1 hour first, you get 12 p.m. You add 1 more hour, you get 1 p.m. as your final answer. All right, so add one hour, add another one hour. And do it step by step, there's no issues there, okay? 1 p.m. So. At 6 a.m., Azlan started his run from point A to point B at an average speed of 16 km per hour. Half an hour later, Azmi started cycling from point B to point A at an average speed of 24 km per hour. So as you can see, before we continue reading, Azlan is a little bit slower as compared to Azmi, who's a little bit faster. Both Azlan and Azmi reached their respective destination at the same time. At what time did Azlan reach point B? Now, in this question, we need to understand that they are both travelling the same distance. Okay? Same distance. First step. The second thing to realise is that one of them has higher speed. And that person is Azmi. Okay, Azmi has a higher speed, which means that Azmi will have or will take a lower time as compared to the other person. And the person who has lower speed, accordingly, will take longer time. Alright, makes sense, right? If you're faster, definitely you will take shorter time to finish the race or to finish the cycling race. If you're slower, your time taken will be longer. Alright, so what we need to do when there is a common distance, same distance problem... We need to develop a speed ratio. So, what is the speed of Aslan is to the speed of the other person, which is Azmi. Okay, so this will be a 16 is to 24. Simplest form, divided by 8, divided by 8 is 2 is to 3. And now, we can flip the ratio in order to find the respective time taken for these two people. Okay, so this will be 3 is to 2. Alright. So, Aslan is taking 3 units of time. Azmi only 2 units. What is the difference in time? The difference in time is actually that half an hour which Azmi started a little bit later. Since they both reached at the same time, that means the difference in time will be half an hour. So, 3 minus 2 is 1 unit. And one unit will be equals to half hour. Question is, at what time did Azlan reach point B? So Azlan took three units of time, as you can see here. So three units is equivalent to three times half, which is one and a half hours. Okay, so at what time did he reach? So Azlan started at 6 a.m. So it's one and a half hours later. So one hour later is 7 a.m. And half hour later is 7 uh, 30 a.m. Okay, so again, step by step, half an hour is 30 minutes. Alright, final answer for this question 7 30 a.m. Korea X takes 10 hours to deliver a parcel from city A to city B. Korea Y takes 2 more hours to deliver the parcel along the same route. If the speed of Korea X is 9 km per hour faster than Korea Y, find the speed of Korea X. So again, this is a same distance problem, right? Both the Korea, Korea means delivery person. Both the distance travel is the same because you are moving from A to B, which is the same places. Alright, so if it's the same distance, if you have a larger speed, that means correspondingly, 
time taken will be smaller. If you have a smaller speed, you're slower, all right? Time taken will be longer. All right, so now we know the time taken by Courier X, which is 10 hours. can develop a ratio for time taken by X is to time taken by Y. Now, this will be 10 plus 2, right? Because it said that Courier Y takes 2 hours more. So this is 10 is to 12, simplest form. Uh, you can divide by 2, divide by 2, you get 5 is to 6. Which goes to say that the speed of x is a little bit faster because it's taking lesser time as compared to y. The speed of x will be 6 and the speed of y will be 5. Okay, And now that we know x is 6 units, y is 5 units, the difference between 6 minus 5 is 1 unit. And what we can do now is that we can find the speed of x. Okay, that's what they want. So that one unit is the difference in speed, which they said is 9 km per hour. So what is the speed of Courier X? That would be 6 units. Which is equivalent to... 6 multiplied by 9, which is 54 km per hour, which is our final answer for this question. Jessica and Randy drove from their house to Malacca at constant speeds. Jessica took 4 hours to reach destination. Randy took 1 hour lesser to complete just 2 thirds of the whole journey. Find the ratio of Jessica's speed to Randy's speed now. First thing to realize is that the distance travelled from their house to Malacca is the same. It's just that they're probably in a different vehicle. That's why Jessica is going to take a different time. Randy's going to take a different time. Okay. So, to solve for the speed ratio, remember, if you have a constant distance, the speed ratio is opposite to the time ratio. So, we need to find how much time does Jess take for the entire journey, which we know. We know for Jessica, for the entire journey, she'll take four hours, right? For Randy, we know that he is taking 4 minus 1, which is 3 hours. He's taking 1 hour lesser to complete just 2 thirds of the whole journey. So we'll talk about Randy now. For Randy to complete just 2 thirds of the journey, he will take 3 hours. So if you find 1 third, it will be 3 divided by 2, which is 1 and a half hours. And for the whole journey, which is 3 out of 3, Randy will take one and a half times three, which is equal to four and a half hours. So what is the time ratio then? Time, since you want to know for Jess is to Randy, we write the time for Jess is to Randy. Now, uh, Jess will take four hours to complete the whole thing. Randy will take four and a half hours. I remove the fraction by multiplying by two. So your eight is to nine. And now you can write the speed ratio, which is just opposite. So this would just be 9 is to 8. Okay, so final answer for this question, 9 is to 8.